The first time I heard that, the let's get retarded in here version, uh -huh. I thought that that was like one of those Howard Stern parodies or something like that. <laughs> that was the Weird where, Al version. Where they'd taken the <laughs> let's get it started in here and changed it to let's get retarded in here because they were being offensive and it's frankly funny. But that's the actual song. Yeah. When they're talking about getting down, they want to get retarded. Wait, what does that mean? You're just like, you know, dancing like you're crazy. Oh, I think. Warning. Today's episode contains the R word. You, sir, are worse than Hitler. So welcome, everybody, to That Gets My Go. It's the game show that everybody's talking about, especially the big-breasted secretary in your building. That's right. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rish Outfield, talking like this for no reason at all. Thank you for doing so. It's very, very late at night. You should be asleep a long time ago. In fact, your wife is getting up for work in like a 15 hour. minutes. Oh, okay. She's uh, supposed to be at work really early today. And uh, we were just reading a story a minute ago and yelling, and I woke her up. Let's talk about that for a second. This is just my opinion, but uh -huh, that okay. doesn't make it no, set in stone fact. Whoa. That when it comes to acting on these, these audio dramas or these, these stories that are full cast, you got to sell it. You got to give it your all. Yeah. Uh, and which means, you know, if it's like, I'll never join you, he shrieked. You've got to shriek. But please don't, but we don't do need the, to sell it now. If you do the fake, I'll never join you, he shrieked. I'll never join you. What would you call that? The yell whisper, the whisper yell that you do where you want to make it <coughs> seem like you're yelling, but you don't actually yell. It just, it's a kid thing. Kids, yeah. Kids, you know, they're not supposed to be up this late or whatever, and they're playing. <laughs> and it's like, no, I got you. No, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's something that you learn as a child to feign screaming. And when I hear an adult do it, oh, I see red. I, my, my. <laughs> Hands turn into fists. I my sphincter puckers up. You buy. Okay, I'm sorry. That was an overshare, wasn't it? So that's sort of been a rule since we began. That you know, if we're going to do it, do it. You know, it's like you know, he cursed with all his might. We curse with all our might. It's an injustice to the story. It's an injustice to acting. Brilliant. Thank you. If you don't, yeah. And so that decision has cost your wife. A good night's sleep. Yeah, I feel bad. But you know who I really blame? Whoever kicked us out of a room with a closable door. <laughs> it probably still would have woke her up even with the closable door. Are you guys fighting? I was, I was yelling awful loud. <laughs> well, he, he was screaming for his life. It's just an upcoming story that Brian is going to edit it for us. And we considered just going to bed because it's late. Well, not we considered going to bed. He's lost some weight. He's handsome. No, we considered just calling it a night and going our separate ways. And the reason we didn't is because, hey, Brian has volunteered to help us with yet another story. The least we can do is record the darn thing, right? Yeah, and get it to him so they can have his fun with it. So we went ahead and it's very, very late and we woke up your wife. and Yeah, I feel bad, but that's okay. That's something that got her goat. Yeah, that got her goat. I, I guess she's probably grown used to it over the years. We're heading on three years here almost, and yeah, she's probably getting used to us being uh, loud and, and obnoxious in the middle of the night. You know, maybe someday we'll have to stop being up as late as this. What do you mean? Oh, it's always hard for me the next day, too, man. I wake up in the morning and I'm just like, you gotta be kidding, because I have to go to work just like normal. Well, if we ever want to record a story four in the afternoon or something like that via Skype. We could yeah, do we that. we could do that. But you have so many children, she didn't know what to do. <laughs> that we've got to wait until they go to bed. Yeah, we went to the cupboard and the cupboard was bare. Mm. Yeah, that, that is a problem. But, I, you know, maybe we could do that sometime. Maybe it would supplement. Maybe we'll have to try that someday. Yeah, maybe one you could story. send your kids to camp. Yeah. And we could do... Wait, I've heard about what happened to you at camp. I think my kids aren't going to camp. I think they'll be just sticking around the house. He kissed me on the cheek afterward. So Well, then it's love. It is late, but I figured, or one of us figured, who figured, that we should do this thing and then we can call it a night. Yeah, that's probably, I, I thought that was a good idea. Maybe I figured it. And the reason is, we finally both saw 
Tangled. Tangled. And in the past, there was an episode where we kind of, where I was just, oh, there's that righteous indignation I like to talk about. I was just so upset about what they did to Rapunzel. And the, in case you don't know, for many years, even before it was a CG animated movie, it was Rapunzel. They, Disney was going to do it. They were going to do another Disney princess kind of movie animation with, you know, with the songs and stuff. They hired Alan Menken, the best in the business, to do the songs. And then somewhere along the line, they completely lost confidence in the project. And they decided, well, we need to fire the main guy voice, the main woman voice. We need to cut some of these songs because we're afraid that boys aren't going to go see a movie called Rapunzel. So they brainstormed and somebody somewhere, some marketing genius that was lent to them by DreamWorks said, <laughs> what we need to do is we need to have a really slapstick trailer. We need to make this male centric, have the prince be the narrator of the movie, have him be the main character of the movie. Hell, let's toss out the title Rapunzel and call it something else. If we can get rid of the blonde hair, let's do that too. <laughs> so suddenly Rapunzel became tangled, which I believe is a pun. Dude, it's a palindrome. It's the lowest form of comedy, <laughs> the pun. So, you know, it's funny because when we did our last recording on this subject, I was so very much against this film. I did not want to know anything about it. I was just irritated altogether. And I think you were like giving me options of would you... You put your nuts in a vice or you go see Tangled. And uh, yeah, I was choosing the nuts and a vice over seeing this movie. I was just like, no, I don't want to see it's. I, I don't. I'm not interested at all. But it came out. Had tremendous reviews. It had good reviews. It had a lot of word of mouth as well. I went with a friend of mine and we saw Harry Potter. And uh, they considered for a moment, ah, should we see Tangled? Because it was newly released at the time that we were uh, seeing Harry Potter with my friend. And Should we it, see Tangled? I'll jerk you off. And his daughter, wait a minute, what? And his, oh, you didn't say you saw it with your friend and his family. You just said you saw it with your friend. <laughs> and his daughter says, oh, Tangled, I love that movie. It was so great. That's my favorite fairy tale princess movie now. And I just thought, huh. You know, the more I heard about it, the more... I don't think I had a single person come to me and say, you know what? Eh, it wasn't really very good. Yeah, it was all right. But, you know, whatever. Nobody said that. Everybody said it was good. And so at a certain point, I was like, okay, you can only hear so much before you, you know, you got to go and verify whether it was good or not. And so I was like, all right, uh, you know, if I get a chance, I will see it. And so on my daughter's birthday, she wanted to see it. And so we went over and we saw the movie. And it really was a very, very good film. But the sad thing was the entire time that I was watching it, I was going, why is this movie called Tangled? Never once did they use the phrase Tangled in the film at all. They never say, oh, what a tangled web we weave or any crap like that. There's no tangle reference at all, aside from the fact that if you think about it, long hair would have a tendency to get tangled. That's all there is to the title. The movie is Rapunzel, should be called Rapunzel. They should go back and do a George Lucas and retitle it Rapunzel when it's on video because... It is not tangled. It's got nothing to do with anything. It's just a stupid word that means nothing that they thought, well, that'll maybe get us a better... And maybe, you know, maybe it worked. I don't know. Princess and the Frog, which was very much an inferior film to this one. The script was not nearly as good as Tangled's script was. Songs, not as the good. The songs weren't as good. Randy Newman's not as good. Oh, shit. Was it Randy Newman? <laughs> yes, it no was. No friggin' wonder. Why did I even go to it? Why did I go to Toy Story 3, for that matter? <laughs> but, yeah, you know, that movie made $100 million. It's over 104 I think it was. And now Tangled so far, as of January 17th, has made $182. Um, so uh, $80 million so more. So eight, uh, nearly twice as much Plus it's Plus it's made. still in the top ten. And yes, it's still it's still going. It's still going to bring in some more. I, I doubt it'll make it to two hundred, but it'll probably be close. No, I, so I think it'll make it to two hundred. You think so? It'll still bring in twenty more million. Yeah, two hundred. It'll, it'll be just around that though when it finally finishes off. But maybe that means that it works. I don't know. 
The other thing that I was thinking the entire time that I was watching it. Two naked kids fucking in a pile of hair. What? Uh, was that it should have been tra- traditionally animated? The other thing that I was thinking the whole time that I watched the film was, why is this not a traditionally hand-drawn, regular animated film? I've espoused this theory before on the show, I'm pretty sure, but when you see movies that make big money, especially in opening weekends, when they're a sequel or a certain genre, a certain style, something like that, where you have, for example, a Disney animated film, you go back to, and I always use as my example, X-Men. X-Men was a good movie. People went and saw it. They liked it. It made a fair amount of money, but it didn't make a ton. But then X-Men 2 came out, and all the people that saw X-Men 1 were like, yeah, they've already told all their friends. Everybody's expecting it to be good. People have seen it on DVD, on video. They're all excited. They go and they watch There's it. There's the secret, I think. They go and they Nobody watch it. Nobody sees movies in the theater anymore. It's all DVD. <laughs> They go to the theater this time in droves. They see twice as many people. X-Men 2 made way more money. And once again, it was a good movie, even better than the first. And everybody's like, wow, this is great. So when X-Men 3 comes out, it has a record-breaking open weekend. It's, it's huge. Not as good of a film, and therefore the money dropped off significantly as the weeks went on because the word of mouth fell away. But in a similar style, you had... The Little Mermaid made a fair amount of money, but it wasn't a huge thing. It wasn't, you know, people running through the streets and it didn't break all the records and any of that. But it was one of those movies that built and built and people said, oh, you got to go see this. This is a great movie. I went and saw it and I really liked it. And my sister dragged me to it when I was a kid. You are a kid. I was like 13 years old, and which is like the, the worst age to probably be at to be seeing a Disney movie. 13 years old, you're way too cool to be going to some princess movie. And I was mortified to be being taken to this girl's movie. But by the time the movie was over, I was won over. I was like, well, this really is a really good movie. I liked it. And then when the next one came out, well, the next one after that, Beauty and the Beast came out. And this is basically the sequel to The Little Mermaid. I mean, it isn't a sequel, but it's the same thing in the same line. And it was a much bigger film. And then Aladdin came out, and it was bigger. And then The Lion King came out, and it was the freaking biggest thing of all time. And everybody was saying, holy crap, an animated movie can make money like this? And it's basically all got to do with that. That's how you can build to something amazing like that. And... Disney had the chance to do that. They had the chance to build something like that. They started with Princess and the Frog. It was meager. But then they had this film that could have come right on its heels. This one was the kind of thing that you could have used as a base, like The Little Mermaid. You could have said, okay, here it is. Now the next one, if it's as good, nearly as good, close to as good, it's only going to keep building But unfortunately, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, It's not like they can really build. They don't have really a brand that's established like that you know pixar has a computer animated brand dreamworks sort of has a brand everybody kind of knows what they're getting from that but it's not necessarily it's not consistent is it yeah it's not consistent it's not necessarily a good thing say this is a dreamworks picture you go oh well it could be a madagascar 2 it could be kung fu panda you know you don't know what you're going to get Monsters versus aliens. Yeah, it could be that. There's that, but yeah, Disney just doesn't have that. They don't. They, they've got as much computer animated brand awareness as Blue Sky does, or uh, Fox Animation does. You know, nobody knows that they're the ones that did that. I don't know. Maybe they can build from this if, if the next one is princess related somehow but i don't think they really have what what do they have coming down the pipeline do you know i don't think i do i mean this is the year that pixar is going to do one in the summer one in the fall one in the summer one in the fall and i don't know i'm sure disney is going to continue to put out their competing movies but they become competing movies when you have one released at thanksgiving and one released at christmas you know right um if i were Disney CG animation, I would just say we're going to 
take a break and work on Roger mm. Rabbit 2 or something like that, you know, instead. Just send some of those guys up the coast to freaking uh, the Bay Area and let them work with Pixar. On, I mean, they were already basically doing that, doing two a year. It's what they were doing before, just as separate competing companies. Give that whole thing up and just merge and do them together. But one thing's for sure. They'll look at the numbers for Tangled versus the number for Princess and the Frog and say... The reason Tangled did better was computers. <laughs> you know there's somebody that said uh, that in a position of authority and everybody has said, yes, sir. And at the same time, you know some shitbag douche <laughs> out there has said, you saw what we did with that trailer. The worst trailer Rish Reginald Outfield ever saw for an animated film and we made money hands over fist. A misleading lie <laughs> of a trailer. It had scenes where the hair was attacking him and punching him in the nuts and going up his ass and all sorts of stuff like that that we made up just for the trailer to trick people into thinking they were getting a DreamWorks kind of kicking the nuts movie. And people <laughs> ran to the theater. They pushed down old ladies and kicked them as they were trying to get to the theater to see this movie. That's what we did. Yeah, that sucks. You know, I don't think traditional animation has a, a gasp. Maybe just in the toilet. I'm sure they're saying, yeah, it's computer. It had no, oh no, what? The script was way better? No, no. That had nothing to do with it. Oh, this one was a good and the other one was bad. No, it was because this one was computer animated. But, but but it's funny. It's almost as though with CG they were trying to make a traditionally animated Disney princess flick. Yeah, because they did everything to soften the faces and the and the hair and the backdrops looked painted and and certainly there was stuff that you could only do in computers. But they, there were so many moments where you're just like, wow. They mix computers with regular animation. Hand-drawn 2D animation. And the way that the, the, the girl, that Rapunzel looked, mm -hmm. she looked like she had been drawn by the same artists that created Belle and Ariel. Yeah. And the cow in Home on the Range. You know, these classic characters that people have they loved for generations. But am I wrong? Didn't you feel like it... It was, it screamed traditional animation. You know, it started out with that Disney's 50th uh -huh. feature animation film or whatever. It's like, this is a milestone. And from beginning to end, it was like, this isn't CG. This is what you grew up loving. Yeah, it's weird because I totally don't put it in the same category. I know that Disney does, and they probably count all the Pixar movies. You think of that? I, I don't know. I, I don't think for sure though. They count Chicken Little and Meet oh. the Fuckers. I mean, Meet the Robinsons. And <laughs> wow, name you really are pulling it up. Uh, uh, there's another uh, one. That's, is there another that they did one year? Those are the only two that I really remember. But yeah, it's weird because all of those I don't even. I wouldn't even put them in the same category. You know, there's uh, films like Mary Poppins, which includes animation or Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit or be uh, bed, bed knobs knobs and, and broomsticks and and so forth and those ones I also would not put in the anime and that's I, I the don't way. imagine they do either they, well, yeah I don't dragon, think they, they do either but as. but I feel the same way about these computer anime they're not animated films like the other ones are they don't count they shouldn't be on the list that fiftieth should not even be seen on that film because it doesn't even count it's not it's just not supposed to be there. But didn't you feel like Tangled belonged there next to Beauty and the Beast and Pocahontas? And no, even though it was CG, I, I did, and yet I didn't because of that that thing. I don't know what it is, but uh, I don't know why it it feels that way to me. But uh, yeah, it just gets on my nerves. Like that's not an animated film. Animated film, a guy draws things on the paper. That doesn't count. I don't know why I feel that way, and it, it probably shouldn't be that way. But that's the way I think. It's not this. It's like it, it should be in a different category, like live action and uh, documentary and CG and animated. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. That's just me. I. Uh... All right. Well, gets my goat supposed to be short, but they never are, are they? Yeah, we've kind of been talking a while, and we, we, I guess we've got the tradition now <laughs> of breaking them into two or three or four parts. So we're gonna we're gonna cut ourselves off here. And then we'll continue on this subject coming up next time. So hopefully you were enjoying what we said and want to come back again. Hell with you if you want. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm Big Anklevich. I'm Rich Outfield. Thanks for listening. Good night. See you, folks. That Gids My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license for some reason.